Guyana is the, the land of many waters. It's a very beautiful country, surrounded by water. The people thought, well, where, where, where is Guyana? Is this in Africa? Is this Guinea? Uh, is this Ghana? Um, you know, where, where is this country? We are in South America, the only English speaking but culturally, we are linked to the Caribbean. Originally, they were uh, the Guyanas, three Guyanas. And in the past, they were referred to as the wild coast. People were afraid to uh, do anything on it because it was the coast was below sea level. We were colonized by the British. In 1966, we became independent. Guyana uh, has the largest amount of masjids in the Western Hemisphere per capita. Or more than 150 masjids in Guyana, 83,000 square miles, and the Muslim population just about 12%. People are very hospitable. You will sense that hospitality more when you move to the rural parts. We have masjids in all of these counties and even in our bordering towns. Ramadan is a beautiful month and I love it so much. Uh, and it is, subhanAllah, a month that I welcome a lot in my life because it brings immense blessings and reward for myself and my family. After Fajr at the Masjid, I go to the market uh, to get the vegetable, the meat, the fruits for the iftar in the afternoon at the Masjid. I'm a butcher for 26 years. A lot of meat. A Ramadan month like this, I born. This why I mean in Ramzan. Well, first you lick, it, lick down the animal. You tie it up tight, four foot tight. You turn your head against the east. Bismillah, Allah, Wakbar, three times. The weapon got to be sharp though. This is the site that the first masjid was built in Guyana in 1860. Um, it was built by the indentured servants who came from India. So though Muslims came during slavery, um, they were not able to practice their religion. So uh, the religious practices that they had in Africa was almost wiped out in the public domain. 
all of them became Christians. They were given new names and everything. And so, but the Muslims who came from India were allowed to practice their religion. So they had to pray. So they built the mosque at this site, the first uh, mosque structure that was set up. According to recorded history, Muslims came here first through slavery. The Europeans, Dutch and English, they had Guyana as a plantation colony, a place that you can grow produce, mainly sugar, later. But they could not find labor. Sugar is a labor-intensive occupation. They brought slaves from Africa. They're largely Nigerians, Ghanaians. Sugar was the beginning of the colony, but now it's going off. My name is Najuddin Rahman. I work in from working at Blaymont Estate Gaisuku. I'm from Shieldstone. I'm working for 29 years now. You have cut the cane. If you have cut and drop something, you just cut and drop something, you just cut and load the cane. This work is very hard for Ramadan one for keeping fast because you could do bit of the food but the water you couldn't do bit of the water. Because you can cut the cane and drop it and something is you're thirsty. You have more Muslim, but you're hard for them for keep the fast Ramadan month. We make iftar with the friends at the masjid, like polori, chana, dates, juice, drinks, and so we just make iftar at the masjid. Well, you get different parts in cooking the food at the masjid. Sometimes cook at the home and carry at the masjid. This is a family place. I live here. I've built this house for five years. And life is, so far, life is good. When we marry here, then we turn Muslim. We convert to Muslim. I feel so happy in my life when I turn Muslim. I like Muslim religion more because it's easy and it's simple. <laughs> We born in a Muslim home. My father was an imam. It was very nice, reaching your, your, your brothers, your sisters. I went to the masjid and prayed salah, and then you came home. You enjoy the day. Fast is so easy. You don't feel it that if you keep fast. Allah make it so easy. In 1838, at the emancipation of slavery, according to the documents, it reported that the slaves celebrated with a Friday midday prayer. The only people who perform Friday midday prayers are Muslims. And so after the abolishment of slavery in 1838, the British now looked elsewhere for cheap labor, and they moved to India. The Indians came under an arrangement called the indentureship. Of course, the majority of the Indians uh, were Hindus. Approximately 17 to 20 percent of the Indians who came were Muslims. They were allowed to practice their religion. They were also allowed to congregate. In the, in the 60s, Muslims started to leave Guyana and go abroad to study Islam in the Muslim world, Pakistan, India, Arabia, Egypt. Muslims start to practice Islam more in performing their prayers more regularly. The masjids start to open. Is there still a great need for the Arabic language? And uh, you would appreciate um, Arabic language, yes, being taught by an Arab.
السلام عليكم ورحمة الله أوكي بليز ستارت ريسايتين سورة الضحى بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والضحى والليل إذا أنا جيت من بلدي لمهمة اللي هي الدعوة مثلا ألقاء الدروس تعليم اللغة العربية تعليم القرآن الكريم الحمد لله تخرجت من جامعة الأزهر سنة 2006 وأنا أعيش في جيانا دولة جيانا في العاصمة جورج تاون منذ سنة 2017 What means king in Arabic? What means beautiful? What means door? That line? الباب أنا أول ما جيت جيانا بصراحة اتفاجأت في كل شيء. اسبيل اجين اند ريد. فعامل اللغة وعامل العادات والتقاليد وعامل الثقافة وعامل التوقيت كان ليا مفاجأة. الحاجة اللي اتفاجأت فيها بين الشباب هنا ان في اقبال على الاسلام وفي احترام للاسلام ففي ناس يعني مش مسلمين لا يدينون باي دين او منهم ان هم غير مسلمين ولكن ياتوا الى الفصل حبا في تعلم القرآن. حبا في تعلم اللغه العربيه حبا في زياده الثقافه وبزياده الاكثر من ذلك بعض الطالبات يرتدين الحجاب حبا في الحجاب بغض النظر عن اختلاف الدين جايانا بلد متعدده الديانات التسامح الديني كله بيحترم حريه الراي والتعبير وحريه العقيده فرانسيس ذا بريزيدنت اوف جايانا Irfan Ali is a Muslim. He is really the, the first Muslim president of any country in the whole of the Americas. The first Muslim president is right here. Well, I come from a normal Guyanese family uh, that contributed significantly to public service. Uh, my grandparents and my parents uh, and, and myself, our family came up from an Islamic background. Uh, my, both my parents would have completed Hajj. I'm from a village called Enora on the west coast of Demerara. Uh, grew up playing in the uh, compound of the Lenora Mosque. That's our local mosque. As a child, I remember uh, looking forward to Ramadan from many perspectives, not only for the Tarawih Salah, but from the community. So the community came together and had iftar together. As a community, people came, all the children, uh, your parents, they were all there, uh, breaking the fast together, eating together, sharing together, eating from the same plate, and then praying together, building relationship. And then he has chosen us this most blessed time of the year, a time of redemption. The believer who recognizes the value of this gift can only reflect on the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ayyaman ma'dudat. This is a special time, beloved brothers and sisters. This is not any regular time of the year. For us, we need to recognize this is an opportunity of a lifetime, so to speak. In Guyana, um, we have a rich country in terms of diversity, as you know, uh, and that is something that we can celebrate. Uh, the Muslim community is uh, the smallest of the three main religious community, but yet the country elected a Muslim president.
many mosques across the country, you will see that community spirit again, where the community, uh, the, the people in the community, the children, their parents, they're coming together as families join together in one community, breaking the fast of iftar, sharing and uh, praying together, you know, connecting with each other. Some beef brought up from the market, yes. cooked, and one million for the iftar. During the month, Ramadan, the fasting month, every day we cook. We feed them when they come in the afternoon, the fasting person. And who doesn't keep fast? Uh, everybody eat dinner before they go home. We'll be between men, women and children and things by 200 people. 27 years of convert. I married to a Muslim girl. So then after I married to her, I become Muslim. I had to convert before I have married to her. Too. I find it in Islam good. It's more simple religion. You do you have to do the right thing. The religion is straightforward. The books tell you what to do and you do the right thing and that's it. No, thank Say you. alhamdulillah. Bismillah. La ilaha illallah. Muhammad Rasulullah. Allah wakbar, Allah wakbar all the time, all the time. And keep me up for the day. Do what we have to do. I have no idea for my religious lady. I'm a convoy. My husband is a Muslim. This is like about three years now of fasting. It take me 21 years after to convoy to a Muslim. So when you're there, where the cool, you don't find it hard. Is after you break your fast, you Come eat in. dinner. When you finish Maghrib prayer, you eat the dinner. In Ramadan, it's the time for the togetherness. When the whole Jamaat come together, you pray together, you eat together, you break fast together, it's the time for togetherness. tells us that fasting is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is a deed that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taken upon himself that he will reward each and every one of us brothers and sisters. He made that initiative, he made that proactiveness to start respective brothers and sisters. Brothers and sisters, once again everyone is invited for khana after the remaining salah and dua inshallah. Amin alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen ar-Rahman ar-Rahim maliki yawmideen Iyaka na'abud wa iyaka nasta'in indina as-sirat al-mustafid After you finish breaking the fast, you feel so good, happy Because you don't know you do something good for the day And you didn't eat all day so now when you eat, you feel good. Ramadan is a very great month. Lots of blessing. Oh, it's good. It feels so good to observe the holy month of Ramadan. And when you do that, you have so much, so much strength. You don't know where the strength is coming from. It's from Allah. <laughs> Allah Akbar Allah Akbar Allah Akbar <laughs>
CIAG was formed in July 1, 1979. It was a very small place. When we were giving zakat out in the 70s to 20 or 30 persons, that has now increased to more than 1,200 persons. Alhamdulillah, now the CIAG on a monthly basis is distributing close to about 50,000 US dollars in zakat and towards the orphan sponsorship program. These are routine activities. This is a food hamper project executed by the Central Islamic Organization of Guyana. These are monies that would have been do donated by persons locally in Guyana, regionally and internationally for food hampers to be given to fasting Muslims during the month of Ramadan. Almost 2,000 persons having a hamper each. So, how much person live in your homes? Six. Six. Oh, six. Want to sign here for me? Sign here. What I'm doing here, I'm taking down their names, uh, their masjid uh, that they are attached to, uh, the number of person uh, that will uh, benefit from uh, this food basket. And this is like an iftar food basket that will assist them in making preparation for their suhoor and making preparation for their iftar uh, at their homes, their family, if they cannot make it at the masjid. And these person are selected uh, because they are from the less fortunate of our community, uh, Blairmont, uh, Shieldstone, and the Edward. The, uh, make preparation of different grains, uh, different varieties of uh, uh, dry goods that can be cooked rice, uh, macaroni, chow mein, flour. This distribution is done uh, not only in Ramadan but throughout the entire year. I cook for thousands of people. Yeah, I do a lot of cooking. People ask me, they say, Tony, don't fed up cooking. I say, no, this is my hobby. And I love cooking. This cooking done every Ramadan month for the Camp Street prison and Lusignal prison. Uh, well, this is a good blessing because it's our brothers in there. So, you know, we need to do this for them. Because, you know, the fasting, so the men that break the fast, they need to get something to eat, so. You know, we try to change the menu every single day and give them a different thing every day. I like today now, as you know, we be doing dal and rice and chicken curry for them. But today on Monday. It's Ramadan month. You know, we're looking out for the brothers. You know, we're looking out for the brothers them, so that's why we do it for them. Converted at the masjid that is in the prison, a more bigger facility that was uh, in 2017. They, I know there was a book by the name of the Quran, but uh, I never read it because I couldn't have read. And while I saw the brother was reading the Quran and he was uh, teaching another brother, and I and I was like curious to learn or to understand what is really going on. So I said, I want to be there. I want to take part. And I went and I listened. And from there I listened. I feel so amazed from since there. And I said, you know what? Read it to me, brother. Tell me what it said. Being closer to Allah, 
catching Juma every Friday, farming a daily salads with your brothers. Remember, it's much better. It's one of my main things in the process, then, of course. I must say, it's, it's a lesson and a half. Can write a book from this. Surely can write a book. My best of advice would always tell any Muslim brother, non Muslims, try not to get yourself caught up. But like I said, by the grace and the mercies of Allah, subhanAllah. Go through very much safe. Allah has a ban with Allah, never want to put us through difficulty, but uh, we put ourselves. You know, no one looking out for us except Allah has a ban with Allah. What we could have done. The Muslim inmates are very cooperative, they're very disciplined, and I would want to believe it's because. They engage in so much of praying, so much time for days. They don't find that they are so erratic like the other inmates. That's just my view. The prison um, don't really prepare for Ramadan. And this is a special food, a halal food, I think it is. They, they give us food, but they don't provide for the breaking of the fast. That is not within their jurisdiction, but we get three meals a day. This is the facility that we, we perform our Friday Jumat Salat. These are the mats. It's not a complete one, it's just pieces that we use. In the 90s, we, we start to see a resurgence of, a resurgence of Islam, especially among the, our Afro brothers and sisters, and many of them are returning to Islam. And there are a number of communities of Africans who are Muslims. In some cases, it, it is predominantly the Imam is African, and most of the congregation are from the African brothers and sisters. And I must add, sometimes these converts are more uh, practicing of the religion than those who were born Muslims. I never think about being a Muslim because as a young boy, leaving school, meeting with friends, when I think about it, I say like, you know, I would lose too much. You know, the way of life, you know, you can't eat, you know, you can't go to parties. I didn't think about it such, you know. A day while going to, going to work in the army, I made a little prayer in English as a Christian. I said, if things work out good for me, I would accept Islam. And it worked out so good. I had no choice. I took Islam very seriously. I always say that, well, if I'm a Muslim, I must live as a Muslim. I pray five times a day. I try to make it very, you know, efficient. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. I become the muazzim for the mosque. And from there on, I'm here all the while. Salah, salah. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. I never want to give somebody the keys to open the, the masjid. So that responsibility, I take it very seriously that if I'm not there, the masjid would be locked and I would be held accountable for prayers for the brother who is sitting oh. or waiting on me. So I try to be very punctual. And that actually motivate me to to be here five times a day.
The majority of the people in this community is most African people. And most of the people that come over Masjid here is most African people. Sophia have a, a stigma. And the stigma is that most of the people that live in this area get themselves tangled with the law. Many people uh, stigmatize the area with this. But so far that I am here, crime has reduced. A lot of things uh, positive has coming out from it, this area. Whatever we can assist, we assist the community with. So whatever problem they're having, whatever difficulty they're having, they can come out and tell us and we can see whatever assistance we can lend. So this is a plus for our Jamaat as well, our masjid, that the people in the area, they respect us. Because they see what we are doing, it is honesty, and we try our utmost best to serve the locality, this community, with respect and tolerance for each and every single individual that reside in this area. There are many people out there right in our locality here, in our community. They are interested in Islam. They are curious and they see the, how Muslims deal with people, how Muslims live, and they realize that this should be the way out. You know, but you, but you see the love that Islam have for often and Islam give to the people. So, and that make me as well more uh, uh, fall in love with Islam. So, it's a community which is vibrant which everybody understand the responsibility of as Muslim in this blessed month of Ramadan. The, the first thing that you have to do is seek knowledge. Seek knowledge. I would go home, read my Quran, you know, just relax and focus in on the next prayer, which would be Zohar, and there back again. As a Muslim, I don't want to be too proud by telling you that well, I am a good Muslim. Allah knows best. But what I do, I try to, you know, do the things that is pleasing to our Creator as much as I can. Now the Indian, he is already a Muslim, but then he's not practicing his deen. His parents might not be, you know. A Negro or black Muslim would come with a purpose actually. Most of the black brothers would come as a with a purpose because he now want to become a Muslim. So this is my first Ramadan as Muslim. Last year Ramadan I wasn't Muslim, but I observed a few days as to see what it was exactly. That's when I was learning about Islam. It's an experience. <laughs> it's not easy, but it's a commitment. Tell me how you got the Getting married to the person I'm with right now was also one of the reasons I converted to Islam. We ended up in the talks of getting married. We never planned on getting married. It just happened and we decided one day uh, let's get married next month and we got married next month right on the same yard out there it was very small very simple and it was very happy uh, 
Um, I'm originally from Bartica. My mom was half Amerindian, half um, Negro, and my father was fully Amerindian. I was an active Christian. I used to play drums for the church, the keyboard, and I stopped. I got converted last year. The Muslim faith has shown me the peaceful, the peace in life. Sometimes when I'm stressed or something, I play some Quran and it basically helps me to focus. So the whole of Islam is really relaxing and calming in my perspective. It teaches you to be a good person to others, a good person to yourself, a good person to your friends, families, and all these sorts of people. So it teaches you more how to live a good life physically, uh, have, do good deeds, and be a, viewed as a good person as a Muslim should. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Ustaz Muhammad, how are you, my dear friend Muhammad? I'm very happy to see you, okay? Every year you're happy, and inshallah, Mصر is good. I'm here for six years here in Guyana, and I'm not going to move from Guyana. فأنا بكلم أصحابي يعني ممكن في الأسبوع مرتين طبعا أكيد إحساس بالوحدة وبذلك في بداية الأمور وإحساس بالوحدة أكثر لما بتكون في رمضان بتتذكر أيام رمضان لما بتكون في مصر وسط أهلك وسط أصدقائك بتروح تصلي في المدينة بتروح تصلي في القرية اللي جنب القرية بتروح تسافر القاهرة ده أيام من تعرف الأيام ال أيام ما كنا صغيرين شوية كده أنت عارف أحلى أيام بصراحة أيام الجامعة أي بلد إحنا كناس من الأزهر الشريف أي بلد ربنا بنروح عليها بيكون ربنا ليه حكمة فيها إن ربنا حطك في المكان ده إلا وليه حكمة والسبب إن أنت بتقدم رسالة ربنا My mom always said, I will, I will go on a, uh, in the month of Ramadan. Who pass away in this month, it's usually an honor because it makes your uh, accountability lighter um, on the Day of Judgment. And so every Muslim uh, desires to pass away in the month of Ramadan. And so, alhamdulillah, she is definitely honored. This is one, one thing that made me feel as a son so happy for her that there is nothing, you know, that better I or anybody in the world could have given her. Brothers and sisters all, uh, assalamu alaikum wa barakatuh. We tender our condolence to all the relations. This is not the only existence. That is not the end of it all. That is the beginning of an everlasting existence. Our position in the hereafter... In the past, it was more uh, family-oriented. Now, it, it, there is more open. There is more activities regarding and more information being circulated about Ramadan and fasting via social media. In the past, we did not have television in Guyana, so we all depended on the radio. So in the mornings, we have a radio program. Everybody will tune in to listen to the Ramadan program and the songs being sung in the Urdu language. Alhamdulillah, now today, uh, we have moved from radio. We have now have television programs. We have a lot more information being disseminated via the social media. The, the WhatsApp and the internet, etc., etc. Every day we have uh, television program, radio programs in Ramadan. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Dear viewers, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The government Peace, gives us um, some time on the national television for us to have our Islamic programs. This month was gifted to us so that we may purify our bodies minds and hearts, and cultivate taqwa, God consciousness. The Muslim community, by the grace of Allah, they have developed. Our head of state, we have ministers in the government who are Muslims, 
We have Muslim lawyers. The director of public prosecution for Guyana is a Muslim sister. This year will be 18 years since I have been in this position, been the longest serving director of public prosecutions. I am the first woman to have been appointed as the director of public prosecutions. I am also the first Muslim woman and the first Muslim lawyer to wear the hijab at the bar. Oh. Mm -hmm. but if came to just I the performed the Hajj in 1985, and after I had performed the Hajj, I decided that I will wear the hijab. So I had gone and leave, I came back to work, I started wearing it. I had no adverse reaction. And I have always been respected at the bar, and I have never been treated differently. Muslim Guyanese have always held um, Ramadan in high esteem. Families would invite friends over and families to break the fast. I love to cook for other people. Generally, I, I love to host. So um, I would host about 10 to 12 times per year. You know, not big gatherings, but very, very close friends. In Guyana, most of the men and some of the women would go to the masjid to break the fast for iftar and dinner, most of them. Some families choose a day or two in the month to invite their extended family over or their very close friends over. So today we chose to invite um, very close relatives. The last two Ramadan, because of the, pan of the pandemic, we, there was a setback because we weren't able to socialize in the masjids and the mosque. Um, so that it was a little different. But the good that came out of that is that families were able to come together in homes that usually didn't happen. As soon as the time for fast arrives, um, we take a sip of water and we have a date. Um, that's the, from the Sunnah of the Prophet on whom be peace, so we continue that tradition. Ramadan is a heightened spiritual time. And, and, and we know the value of every good thing that we do. We know the value of every prayer, of every fast, of every, every zakah, everything that we give. Um, and so we take it very seriously because we know it's multiplied. And so we don't hesitate to, um, to make use and take advantage of the value of Ramadan. I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, give me good manners and the character and the respect like the prophet of Islam. أنت عارف إن كل المجتمع بيكون متماسك من خلال الدين، إن كل واحد بيحترم عقيدة الآخرين، أنا شايف كراجل دين من ناحية جايانا ما فيش تأثير على الدين. جايانا ما عندهم أي مشكلة مع الإسلام، جايانا بلد بتحترم كل الإسلام، بتحترم كل الديانات، مسلم، مسيحي، هندوسي، نسبة نون مسلم، نسبة ما بيقتنعوش نوت بليف، مش مو عندهمش أي دين، والبلد بتعطيهم حرية العقيدة. Keep God working for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and come to pray in masjid because you don't know where your age is will be finished, your time when you will be finished. And the first thing Allah will ask you about praying in Allah. فهنا الحمد لله في الشعب لطيف شعب يحب التعايش شعب يحترم الأديان ف... فده حال الوضع الشبابي يعني اللي أنا شفته Here you have the world's three great religions together side by side Hinduism, Islam, Christianity side by side Our pleasure to join with our presidents The diversity is not only from a religious perspective The diversity is from an ethnic perspective also 
We are a land of six different people fused together uh, on the one common uh, banner, and that is we are Guyanese. This week in Guyana, we have a, a very interesting period. We, the Muslims, are in Ramadan. The Christians are in the period of Lent, fasting. And the Hindus are in the period of uh, Navratri. So it, all three of the major religions are fasting. And today we have a national day of prayer and fasting. The people of the country, they were fused together in struggle. And in that struggle, there are certain fundamental principles that, that bound the people together. And that is the love for freedom, the respect for each other, uh, viewing uh, each other um, equally in the eyes of the law, in the eyes of human, and developing that level of respect and tolerance for each other. This country, we're blessed. We live in harmony with all the other religions, the religions, the Hindus, the Christians. Uh, we live in harmony with everyone. Shit. I'm here to party tonight. Everybody feeling all right. Hey. This our interpretation of Islam. It is one that promotes peaceful coexistence, religious tolerance, and respect for everyone respecting the humanity of every person, irrespective of their race or irrespective of their religion. If you're not uh, promoting peace, you're not promoting tolerance, you're not res promoting respect, you're not re promoting trust, you're not promoting love, then you cannot be uh, representing uh, Islam. Just a simple talk with a Muslim brother can ease the tension of whatever it is you're going through. And Islam, as you would know, Islam is a way of life. It's not what you feel like. You got, it's a process that you have to live by. You know, and I enjoy doing it. The future of Islam here, I think, is a very rosy one. And it's something, actually, that can be an example to many um, countries in the world. And for the people to compliment the natural beauty of our country with their good attitude and behavior. Hopefully it will, it will be able to make a contribution of its spirit, of the Guyana Islamic spirit, of tolerance, of acceptance, of growth, of, of contribution to the world. Yes, I think one day Guyana will have a woman as a president and maybe a Muslim woman too. <laughs> Let me see you shake your body, yeah,